It's time for us to go and do some more vault hunting, of course, after I've shown you the bits and bobs that I've put together since last time. So we've had a look at the Vault Forge, we've made a magnet and stuff. There's the Artisan Station and the Recycler, which were the next two quests. So there, there was building the Artisan Station, re-rolling we'll get to, that's what you use the station for. And then there's the Vault Recycler to scrap Vault Gear. Do you remember this Gladius from a couple of videos ago, in that it was just slightly worse than my current sword? Well, this now actually has 11.5 attack damage. So I've done that by using a wild focus to reroll just everything that's on the sword. So I think we're actually going to be able to use this now. Let's pop my old sword in here. We have illager damage. Oh, are those the pillagers? Right, okay, so we would do 11 damage to them, which is still less than the gladius. I'm going to do this one more time. So now this sword does 14 damage. It's just immediately become better than the Gladius again. So just by using these focuses, uh, some Volt Plating and some Volt Bronze, we can take gear that may or may not be okay. Maybe it's a high level, but we need something with better stats on. You know, like say we've got level 12 on all of our gear, but our chest plate's still level 6. But the level 12 chest plate we've got has terrible stats on it. That's what you'd probably use the Artisan Station for. Just throw it in there, try and reroll some stats, see what you get. And then the Vault Recycler. Of course, we don't really need this sword anymore, do we? Our 14 damage one's just so much better, so... Just pop that in there. And we get some Vault Scrap, which, if you remember, is how we make the Voltorite ingots that we need to craft things using Vault Alloy, which is made with Voltorite... Uh, sorry, chromatic steel and vault ingots, or just two voltorite on their own. So there's kind of like a cycle here. So you will go into the vault to get some of the materials and the extra gear. The scrap gear goes in the recycler to give you the parts to make the voltorite that you can then use to craft your own things. In the bounty board, I've just taken an objective to complete a vault, but that will give me Pearnite gems which if you see here can actually substitute quite a few items in the Voltorite ingot crafting. So it usually takes four chromatic iron ingots, four volt scrap, and a netherite scrap. You essentially remove three volt scrap and three chromatic iron from that recipe. I'm sure they can probably be used for other stuff as well, but it seems like a good use for them right now to me. Our current objective in the quest book is just to hit level 10. So we're just gonna pop into a vault, and see what we get. Okay, well it's a, a deserty looking one again. Oh, this is Brian Coral. Interesting. So I guess it's like a beach theme? Oh, this is a good opportunity as well to go through a couple keybind changes I made. So previously I was using my mouse buttons and just like manually swapping between abilities. I also just noticed I didn't bring any shulkers with me. That's not good. But now, my dash is on C, and my heal is on X. So I don't actually need to mess around with the menu. You can just like quick select your skills with custom keybinds, which is very handy, because that means I don't have to worry about switching between them when I actually need both skills. Yeah, this new sword is just one-shotting stuff again, so... Well, I say new sword, I mean the new stats on our old one. I do find it pretty crazy that a level 0 item has been useful for so long, though. Oh, that's a fast boy. Alright, well, they're dead. I think I hear another one in here, though. Yeah, there we go. Guess they couldn't get out. Oh, it's more crabs. More coconut crabs. Oh, and there's a monolith in, like, the first room. It seems a bit cheap. Is that crab taunting me? Get back here, you. Come on. There we go. We will take your soul gems. Yeah, it feels so much more natural having the skills on the binds they're on right now than, like, manually switching between them constantly. Also, the little electric marks that you'll have seen over the tops of the enemies 
That is the shocking head chance my sword now has. So you see there, there's like a 5% chance for that to trigger. I also just got an unidentified shield from that box. Oh, well, um... Don't make this difficult for me or anything, game. That's just two monoliths in two rooms. Okay, well I guess we didn't bring any shulkers, so it's good that we can get out quick enough. Oh, here we go. It's the first interesting thing I've found in this vault so far. An opportunity to do a little bit of digging. Just a mana refill there. Ooh, quite a lot of drowners. Or drowned, rather. Seems like the shocking hit thing as well just pushes them back. Oh, that's just coins. I kind of like the lanterns. I mean, the soul lanterns there, they're pretty cool. Yeah, this vault's been kind of slow, to be honest. There's not really that much in here that I want. I mean, like, these iron nuggets. No, thank you. All right, well, we grabbed some gemstones from this. I got some opal, uh, some beniotite. So that's not too bad. I am having to throw away a lot of stuff now, though. I am really missing those shulkers. I mean, I was going to pick up some of the sugar cane on my way out if I had spares, because I kind of need some. Though that's clearly not going to happen now. And there's some drowners up here, too. That was quite a precarious situation. Just wondering, maybe I don't need to bring all of these vials in with me either. And when I craft the next one up, I should probably go for the one that is affected over time, rather than the one I have now, which is 150 mob kills per charge. Look at this, though. Some interesting architecture. And levers, weirdly enough. And some unidentified vault boots. Okay, let's maybe open these relic boosters. Typically enough, got nothing from them. But hey, that gives me the inventory space to pick that stuff up. You know what? I think I'm just going to get out. I don't have any inventory space. And I think there's probably a few other things we could do, you know, like a different vault with shulker boxes. <laughs> I mean, there's not really that much good stuff in this one anyway, but it would maybe be nice to actually be able to bring more stuff out with me than just what I have on me right now. Might seem like a bit of a waste of the, the vault in general, but I don't know. Okay, so we have these two pieces of gear to roll, and our two crates. So I've unequipped my magnet, just so we can get a look at what comes out. That's an unidentified magnet there. What was that? Oh, some more Pearnite gems. Okay. Well, let's see what's in this. Ah, uh, there's a common plus bit of gear there. I think all of the rest of it in there that's different colors is just jewels, though. Yeah, so there's a common plus helmet. There's a scrappy chest piece. Got some more relic boosters? Nothing, uh, of course. An item rarity, gilded affinity, and gilded affinity jewels. One's like half the size of the other. Wooden affinity, and soulbound. We also got a bitter lemon. These vault fruits are quite interesting, actually. They all remove 10% of your max health, but they add to the vault timer. So I think it goes all the way from, like, kiwis, which add 5 seconds, up to all different kinds of stuff. So this one adds 30 seconds, this lemon. So if you're really stuck, and you have no time to get out, you just eat some fruit, and that gives you more time. Okay, I'm gonna roll all of this at once, and see what happens. Well, it's quite loud. We did get quite a few new transmogs, though. Got quite a few rare items, too. Oh, interesting thing on this magnet. We actually get additional mining speed with it, which is pretty good. I still don't know what copiously does, I might have to look that up to decide which one's actually better, but mining speed sounds good for spawners. So these boots we've got here give you armor, health, mana, crit resist, and item quantity. They're actually worse than my level 0 jawbone ones, by the looks of it but they do have a new transmog. This vault shield I have here has a decent block chance, actually. It's got the high roll for block chance at 10%, though it's slightly worse in terms of thorns, but at the same time, the thorns thing has such a low chance to trigger that does it even matter? This chestplate there is just plain worse than the one we currently have. 
This helmet is 3 armor, 4 crit resist, 3 health, 13 mana, 4 quantity. It has a little bit more health, but otherwise it's just plain worse. Okay, we have a slight issue with our new Vault Crystal. It needs Diorite. I don't have any Diorite. I haven't seen any Diorite around here. I guess we're going on a hunt for some Diorite. I was hoping we may have time for another Vault today, but it looks like we might just be going mining instead. God, these caves are riddled with monsters. Should I bring some torches? Maybe I should bring some torches. That might help. I guess while I'm emptying my, my inventory of crap as well, I'll show you these burgers. Um, you got them from a quest. So you go to gaining more XP. You just craft one plain burger and you get 10 as a reward. So I have these three left. You just eat them. And you should have probably seen my vault XP went up a little bit. Like I explained before, there's a lot of burger ingredients. The more of these you put in, the better the burger you make, and the more XP it's worth. So, there's that, nice and simple. I've just made a few stacks of torches now as well. Uh, I've put the spare ones in my shulkers. So let's just go back down this hole, because I haven't actually gone down this one yet. And then we'll see what we can find. I did spot some iron on the way in, so... I guess we may as well grab this. My magnet's actually going to be quite useful down here, I think. Like, sometimes when you mine things on an overhang and they fall off the edge. We don't actually have to worry about that now because it'll get sucked in. Oh hey, we have a guest. I'm surprised I haven't seen more monsters down here, to be honest. It's really dark. Though, I also haven't seen any of this rock we're looking for. I've just found bits of ore to mine up. I only remember... Diorite and andesite as these bits of stone that nobody liked because, well, you couldn't use them the same way you could use cobblestone. So now that I actually need them, I don't know how to find them. Oh, this stuff as well. Fluorite. Bane of my existence when I first started the mod pack. It looks just like chromatic iron ore. And you do need some chromatic iron to start the mod pack off properly. Which means that every time you see fluorite, you get excited. And then you find out it's fluorite. And then you die a little bit inside. Yeah, every time I think I found it, it's just clay as well. It's this like underground clay that's white instead of like the... the greyish colour that's on the surface, but I think I've just found an axolotl. I have, okay. I think a lot of people are quite obsessed with these things in this game. I remember reading about um, people buying axolotls as pets, like the people doing it way more after they released in Minecraft and not actually knowing how to care for them properly. Which is quite sad, to be honest, but... I don't know. Animals are friends. You should treat them. Very well. And learn how to look after them properly. Okay, well this place just suddenly got much more hostile. Oh, there's some Endermen down there too. Okay, plan. I jump, I dash for that water. Didn't work. Okay, well I've lost everything apart from my soulbound stuff. At least I have a death marker, so I know where I'm going. And I have some armor. And a pickaxe. But that was a bit stupid. I'll admit. I should have looked it up when I dashed. The problem with, um, with dashing is that if it makes you go faster, all you're really doing is just, you know, falling quicker. Okay, there it is. Let's maybe dig down a bit before I jump. Okay, okay. This works. Do I try it again? Am I dumb enough to try it again? I think I am. Alright, okay. That worked. Okay. <laughs> we had half a heart. Now where's that other skeleton? There it is. Alright, perfect. 
thankfully, when you pick stuff up um, from a body like that, it puts it all back into the same slots you had it in before. So it's really, really convenient. I'm also starting to feel like I'm not actually going to be able to find diorite down here. I mean, I've been running around for like 50 minutes now, in total. And I have none. I haven't found a single piece of it. I've come back up a bit because I felt like right down at the bottom of the deep sled might not be somewhere it spawns. I'm just wondering if it's like a, a biome thing. You know, like there's all of this clay around here. Maybe that's stopping stuff from spawning, like other types of rock. This isn't breaking. Well, I've activated it. Oh, that's a lot of monsters. I mean, I'm not really in any danger here, even though I'm in a really rough position. Oh, that's funny. The witch actually poisoned themselves by uh, throwing a potion into a zombie. I'm just going to shulk at these vials as well, because I can't actually use them in here. And that witch dropped an absolute ton of ingredients. Well, hey, there's some more of those monster boxes over there. But if you looked out that way and told me I was in the nether, I'd believe you. It just... <laughs> it just looks like the nether in that direction. It's awful, this place. Alright, monster box, what you got for me? Basically just all the same stuff by the looks of it. I mean, I don't know what this stuff is. Um, just shulk all the... Wait, what? What just hit me? I can hear a zombie, but it sounds like an arrow bounced off my shield. Yeah, it happened again. Is it because I'm poisoned, maybe, and my shield is blocking the poison? Okay, that shulk is full, but that's iron horse armor. We've taken notes from Bethesda and have now monetized the game. Okay, I'm gonna be honest though, I really don't think I'm finding diorite down here. So I think I might just leave. There might be some way I can craft it actually. I'll, I'll get back home and then we'll look at that. Or maybe first I will mine these diamonds. Yep, I'm, I'm quite satisfied with that. Excellent. Oh, I need to move something to pick them up. But seven diamonds, so we got a few of our fortune brocks. Not too bad. Alright, at long last, I've made it home. <laughs> With so much crap in my inventory. I'm just gonna have to put these shulkers back down and just offload into them right now, I think. There's all kinds of stuff in there. There's the Oblivion DLC. Top up those torches, maybe. Oh, okay, this one's empty. Okay, we can fill this one up. Oh, you can actually make diorite with nether quartz and cobblestone. Interesting. How much do I even need? I think it's just two. It is just two. Okay. I guess I'd better see if I have any nether quartz. Okay, unfortunately, I do not. I know it can spawn in the vaults. I just haven't found any yet. Okay, well I guess between now and next time I'm gonna have to go on a quest to find some diorite, of all things. So hopefully that's not gonna be too difficult to get a hold of. Outside of that, we, I probably will do another vault on my own again just to get up to level 10 because then we can start advancing through the quest book again. So we hit level 10 and then we can do elixir vaults. Right, so this kind of explains a question I had here as well. So level 10 introduces elixir objective to vaults. Level 20 adds scavenger and 50 adds hunt the guardians. So right now we will only be finding monolith vaults. We need to level up like half a level and then we'll start getting more objectives, which I'm very much looking forward to. So yeah, I'll see to that, but thank you very much of course to the members and pledges for your continued support, and as soon as I've got that die right, I'll catch you next time.